Welcome to our podcast. My name is Jacqueline Burke and I'm a senior director with Battelle for Kids. And we are excited um, to have Berea City Schools with us today to share their journey with Portrait of a Graduate and implementing deeper learning. So we'll start by introducing Tracy Wheeler, their superintendent, um, who will tell us a little bit about uh, their district and introduce their team members. So Tracy, I'll turn it over to you. Hi, Jackie. Thank you for having us. Um, I'm Tracy Wheeler. I'm the superintendent of Berea City Schools. We are a, uh, an urban school district. We are located in Cuyahoga County. We are just south of Cleveland. We are considered a first ring district. So our district does border the city of Cleveland. Uh, we currently have about 5,800 students. Um, we've consolidated into five buildings. And we have a staff of about 950. So we're considered kind of a mid-sized district in the state of Ohio. Um, I have with us today our team from Academic Affairs. So Nick Desenza is our Director of Academic Affairs. And then we have coordinators at each level in the district. So Katie Rowland works with our elementary folks. Uh, Steve Blatnica is a coordinator that works at our middle school level. And then Sarah Banza works with our high school folks um, from the Department of Academic Affairs. So we're excited to, to be able to talk to you about our journey. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So why don't we just start with um, talking in general about your journey towards deeper learning, kind of where you started um, and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, so we started actually back in uh, probably in the spring of 2021, um, our district's strategic plan had been um, written in 2016. So 2021, five years, and I know a strategic plan really doesn't have a, a particular shelf life to it, but our strategic plan was very outdated and needed to be updated. So at that point, I reached out to Battelle um, and it was had some conversation around we kind of started with, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? We wanted to make sure we wanted to do a portrait. But for us, it was where do we start? Do we start with the portrait or do we update our strategic plan first? So in the discussion with Battelle, we decided to um, begin our journey with the portrait of a Titan. So we started that work in October of 2021 um, with our design team. We finished it in February of 2022. And um, then we started the work right after that in March of 2022 with redesigning our strategic plan um, with the focus of making sure that our strategic plan tied directly into the portrait of a Titan and the competencies and what the skills that we wanted our kids to have to be successful as they uh, leave our district. Um, so Battelle led us through all of that work. We took a team in, <clears throat> excuse me, in September of 2022 to the Ed Leader Conference in Houston. And the folks that are on this call right now were all part of that team. And then um, we extended that to additional members of our executive team. And it was powerful. We, we spent the time there. Um, we attended um, so many different sessions. It was great to hear about people who had been doing the work of bringing the portrait to practice for years. And, um, for us, it was it was reassuring to know that this wasn't going to be something that we were going to walk right into and and be able to put portrait to practice immediately. So we walked away from there with a lot of lessons and a lot of information um, that we were able to bring back to our district um, to to start to be able to do that work. Um, we also then started the work with SOAR in fall of 2022, and that's been a unique opportunity for us. We actually joined SOAR with, uh, what was it, four districts, five districts that had already spent a year in SOAR. So I'll tell you, it was a little intimidating when we first walked in because there were things that were being discussed, shared, you know, whatever. And we were looking at each other like, we haven't done that. And um, but it was great. And for us, what we took away from that more than anything was the the collaboration and the work and the the things that other districts have done. And so, again, people were in, in all different spots, no matter if they they'd had their portrait for 
you know, two years, one year like us, or if they've had it for five, seven to 10 years, um, it didn't matter. So we took a, a team of our, uh, this group was part of that um, SOAR team. And then we actually extended it to include a building administrator from every level, our elementary, middle school, and our high school. Um, so we've spent the last year um, really talking about what deeper learning looks like. And so walking into SOAR that first year and having all these other groups have really defined and identified what deeper learning was and already started to put some of those deeper learning practices into place. That was intimidating for us. But we spent this whole past year um, with SOAR actually being able to define that. And we are actually happy to say we're in a good place. Of, this team has worked really hard to define what deep what our definition of deeper learning is. Um, and so Nick and his team have spent the last probably six months rolling that out to our buildings and our teachers. Um, and I know that we're going to talk about then really getting our design teams in place and how we start to move forward with that um, beginning with the 23-24 school year. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Thank you so much for that that broad um, overview. So I know that you mentioned the SOAR network and I'm just curious, um, you know, what are, are there some more specifics about how SOAR supported your portrait of a Titan and your journey with deeper learning? Yeah, and I, I could speak to that. I, uh, the Ed Luter Conference, as Tracy had mentioned, was our starting point and really uh, started, I think what we really realized at that point was we really loved our portrait of a Titan. We loved the process we went through in creating it. But I think I underestimated uh, now what uh, the implementation of a portrait to practice and and how big a task that's going to be and how important a task it was going to be because we wanted that portrait to come to life within our district. So um, that was a big aha for us at the at Leader 21 conference. And um, that really lined us up with SOAR to be able to tackle that and hear how other districts are implementing uh, their portraits in, within their district system wide. So. Um, a couple of ways SOAR, SOAR, the SOAR network has helped us. Um, one is we've been able to go on a couple site visits uh, with the support of Battelle and the SOAR network and see other districts, other places of innovation, other places who have spent the past three, five, seven years working with their portrait and implementing deeper learning system wide. And it allows, it, it allows us to understand that it's a process that's gonna take us a while and we don't have to accomplish it all in one year but then also look to the future and have a roadmap of how we might get there uh, in the end. Um, so we've done that a couple of times. We also, I can't um, understate the importance of the time we spent together as a team while at the SOAR network meetings. Some of our greatest ideas came uh, out of the time that we were able to pull away from all of our other responsibilities and spend time together talking about what deeper learning looks like, what our portrait competencies really mean, how we can roll this out. Time spent in the Houston airport after the conference uh, generating ideas, time spent in breakout rooms at the Patel building uh, generating all these ideas together. So, uh, and through the facilitation of the staff at Patel and the collaboration with the other districts in the SOAR network, we were able to do that. That's great. So I know that um, you mentioned, there was a mention of an instructional framework, and I'm just wondering how um, the district SOAR team really developed that instructional framework. Absolutely, and I can speak a little bit around our instructional framework. Um, it really started mid-year this year. As Tracy mentioned, we had a representative team um, looking at what instruction looks like K-12. So um, we were at SOAR meeting probably in December of this year and really had some time to break out and, and think about what we wanted to communicate to our staff. Um, and so an important feature in our instructional framework was connecting the dots. How does our portrait competencies connect to um, the UDL uh, instructional framework? That is a big push right now in our district is, is how we can reach all of our students. Um, and then we looked at really three key components um, in our instructional framework. And that included inquiry, uh, I'm sorry, acquiring knowledge, um, transferring it to big ideas, and then finally getting into that idea of deeper knowledge, 
deeper learning and transferring that knowledge over. Um, we've spent a lot of time capturing the words that really um, meant something to all of our teachers as far as those three pieces of learning. Um, and I think too, we spend some time with our SOAR group and our, our district level team around how do we honor the um, skills and the actual um, content knowledge that eventually bridges to that transfer of knowledge and that deeper learning and making sure we honor the whole continuum of learning um, in our instructional framework. So it's really been a powerful opportunity to create this articulated framework um, and then get it out to our teachers, which I know we're going to talk a little bit about. I think I remember that December meeting. That was an intense uh, meeting with you guys in a small room. I remember um, peeking in and hearing some of that conversation. So thank you for sharing that. Um, so thinking about this entire, you know, process and, and the journey, you know, what has, what have you learned that's really helped you on this journey to implement deeper learning? Yeah, I'd be happy to, to share uh, kind of some things that we've learned along the way. Uh, one one of the one of the big things is that this is a big this is a big process a big concept and um, one of the most important things I think for this to actually transfer into a classroom is to honor the work that we've been doing already in the district and that it's not disconnected um, even the work that we have been doing prior to this year is connected to this um, and ultimately one of the biggest uh, ahas was um, that to transfer this concept into classroom implementation, we needed to connect it, connect the dots for people. And that's been said by a lot of different individuals in the district, how important it is to connect the work. So it doesn't feel like this is something brand new, like where did this come from? Um, so, so in doing so, we needed to let people know where, where they've been and where they're going to show them that roadmap. And um, everybody's gonna be entering in that, path in a different spot but for you know some examples of of where this has been happening we've been we've spent uh the last two years really working on instructional strategies high yield instructional strategies well that that practice that implementation that focus on that is part of our our roadmap to deeper learning so making sure that they see that in context to this bigger picture towards uh, where we're ultimately going is the realization of this portrait is really, really important work. And they need, and, and all members of the district need to know that that is just a piece of the larger uh, process that we're on. Um, another example to kind of uh, that, you know, things that we've learned this year and uh, revolve around our, our grading practices. And uh, we realized really early that if we were going to be making progress towards uh, instruction that fostered and developed deeper learning, that we couldn't be stuck in maybe some archaic grading and reporting practices. So we have spent a bulk of this year actually diving into and digging into our grading practices. And we have, uh, we will be over the course of uh, next year and the, in the subsequent years, rolling out um, some some grading practices that are going to help support the work that we're doing with deeper learning. We didn't want to find ourselves stuck in a spot where one didn't support the other. So we've learned we learned, in, and I think we're we're uh, we're excited that these things are happening simultaneously. It's all part of the same work and developing you know, classrooms and a district that supports deeper learning across the board on all levels, including our practices and grading. Thank you, Steve. I Both you and uh, Katie mentioned the idea of connecting the dots, you know, with, with this work. And I'm wondering also, um, just thinking about how you support, you know, all of your stakeholders um, in the district with the implementation of your portrait of a Titan, um, and, you know, your journey to, to deeper learning. Yeah, so um, that's really the critical part. I mean, we have all these great ideas. We've defined deeper learning. Um, we've come up with our roadmap. But really where the rubber meets the road is implementation. How are we going to make sure that our teachers, our families, our students, they're really um, able to successfully dive into 
deeper learning to make sure that our portrait becomes a reality for all of our students. So um, some of the things that I can speak to that are actually going on right now um, to really prepare and empower our teachers and our building leaders. Um, the first one is our summer professional development training that we're currently doing. Um, so right now, and, and Katie talked about this a little bit um, about UDL, um, those are really the pillars um, of the framework of our, of our instructional framework. Um, we really feel like it's the foundation, universal design for learning. So right now, um, all of our teachers and our administrators are getting um, trained in UDL practices. So how um, do we implement those practices in our instruction? How do administrators um, actually realize those things are going on in classrooms and they can kind of foster UDL um, with their teachers? Uh, next week, we have an administrative retreat that's all focused around deeper learning thinking strategies and UDL. So it's really important that we we equip um, our stakeholders with this knowledge and this information. So this really becomes a reality. Um, the second thing that Tracy talked a little bit about was our deeper learning design teams. And uh, really, we reached out to any interested administrators and teachers that wanted to be a part of uh, this committee. And um, basically what the deeper learning design teams are going to be doing is um, they're really just charged with finding entry points um, into deeper learning and um, looking for how these things are already going on in our buildings and making sure we're promoting those and identifying those um, and, and developing more deeper learning experiences in our classrooms across the district. Um, so that that work is going to start um, next year and hopefully um, throughout uh, next year, we could also look at more uh, portrait of a, a Titan, our learning uh, competencies um, and how those how those look across the district. So um, professional development is really important and it's really something that we feel like um, we need to put a lot of time and energy into to make sure that this implementation can actually become a reality for our students. Um, and then moving forward, really just kind of follow our roadmap that we developed in SOAR. Um, and kind of teasing those things out as they go. We don't really have um, very hard deadlines on those things on the roadmap, um, but it's, it's kind of a journey and then we're just gonna move forward from there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's been super exciting for us to watch um, your district over the last couple of years um, as you have put all of these pieces in place and continue this, um, you know, very big, important um, work. So we thank you so much um, for spending some time with us today and sharing your process and your journey. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.